Well, good morning, everybody. Sabah uh, al-khair. You know, for thousands of years, our ancestors looked up in the sky and looked at that little red dot called Mars and wondered what's on it. And just 100 days ago, we landed one of the most sophisticated rovers on that planet. It And it's considered in the United States of one of the most challenging things that have ever been done since the Apollo landing. And what I'm going to talk to you about today, because always people ask me, how do you do that? You know, how do you lead a team of people which do what seems to be impossible? Because everybody thought it was impossible to do that. What kind of people you need to actually be the explorers which make that happen? And not only that we landed there over on Mars, just in the last 10 years, we have visited every planet in the solar system. Either we flew by them or we put orbiters you know, around them. Today, as we speak, we have 25 spacecraft across the solar system that we are monitoring from the Jet Propulsion Lab, the laboratory that I'm the director of. We have the Voyager spacecraft, which are leaving the solar system. We have Cassini, which is in orbit around Saturn. We have two orbiters around Mars. We have two rovers on Mars. Uh, we had orbiters that went around Jupiter. We had probes on Jupiter. We brought samples from comets. We have spacecraft which have visiting asteroids. And the question is, how do you do that? How do you lead those teams and what kind of talent? So that's what I'm going to spend the next 10, 12 minutes to tell you about it. But before I do that, I thought I will illustrate to you how do we land on other planets? What are the challenges? Let me give you an idea, and I'm going to be showing you in a few minutes a video about how we landed on Mars. Just imagine when we are coming toward Mars, we are coming at a speed of 20,000 kilometers per hour. Even a Lebanese driver cannot go more than 200 <laughs> you know, kilometers per hour. And don't even try that. You know, in, uh, so I could go from here to Tripoli in one second. So that gives you an idea of how fast we are coming in. If you calculate the kinetic energy with which you are coming at the top of the atmosphere of Mars, it's the equivalent of 18,000 high-speed race cars. And then within seven minutes, we have to land just like this, so we don't damage the rovers that we are landing. So what I'm going to show you is three ways we have landed three rovers or three landers on Mars in the last eight years. And I'm going to show you the different techniques that we used but more importantly, just watch the people which did the landing. Because at the end, it's not the machines which make work, it's the people which design you know, those machines. So just look at their age. They're not very different than most of your age here. Just look at the tension as they were watching how we're landing those rovers. And just look at the excitement you know, after that when they accomplish what everybody told them it's impossible to accomplish. So with this, how about if we can you know, run the video? Despite all the preparation that you do, what count is how do you face adversity when it's in front of you and what the team does when you face adversity. And this team has faced it with resolve, with courage, and with ingenuity. 
And that's what makes this team unique and that will give them the right to do exploration. fantastic demonstration of what our nation and our agency can do. I could only think of the words of Teddy Roosevelt as I was sitting there. It is far better to dare mighty things even though we might fail than to stay in the twilight that knows neither victory nor defeat. And the team brought us victory. We are so proud of you. And we are going to continue not only exploring Mars, but exploring the solar system and exploring the universe because our curiosity has no limit. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much, thanks. So let me tell you, when we were landing that rover, there were 50 million Americans watching it in real time. It was on August 5th at 8, uh, or sorry, at 10.30 in the evening in, uh, in Los Angeles. And there were 50 million people sitting down watching it. And the following day, there was 1.8 billion hits on our website. And I'm sure many of them came from Lebanon and from LAU and AUB, were people who were uh, interested in seeing of what actually you know, has happened. So let me describe to you what would it take, you know, to do that. Um, and how to lead a team, you know, we have 5,000 scientists and engineers, you know, at JPL, who I call them, there are 5,000 explorers. Uh, number one, you just have to have a vision. You have to always be thinking about what do you want to accomplish? And not something which is small, but really look beyond the next horizon and say, what is the vision that you want to accomplish and that you want your team to accomplish? The next important thing is you have to have passion. If you don't have passion for what you are doing, you might as well give up. And it doesn't have to be space exploration. It could be passion for music. It could be passion for art. It could be passion for poetry. But unless you have passion for what you are doing, uh, your, your, your chances of succeeding is not very high. People ask me, how many hours do you work? I tell them, work? I don't work. You know, I go in the morning and uh, we explore and we invent new things and I learn new things and come back home and tell my family what I did. I don't work. So for me, going and doing what we do in the exploration is not working. It's part of your life. It's something that you are excited, you know, about doing. The other part, which is very important, is we make sure we have people who have a lot of curiosity. Now, the name of the mission was curiosity, but there was a meaning behind it. You have to be curious. You have to be fascinated by what's around you. I can tell you, I do a lot of hiking, and literally, I spend hours just watching the flowers. I look at the flower and wonder, why is this one red, why is this one blue? Why does the flower, some of them have big leaves and some of them have small leaves? Why some of the trees have needles and why some of them have, you know, different kind of feature on it? And when you do that next time, just go in your yard and look at the roses. I mean, it's absolutely fascinating. You know, how did that come about? 
So having that curiosity is what is required from an explorer. I met a gentleman here, forgot his name, who's a mountaineer, who's going to be speaking this afternoon. Here he is. I'm sure he's doing the same thing. He's absolutely fascinated by the beauty of this world and by the challenge, and he's very passionate about what he's going to be doing. And that allows him to do things which seem to be impossible for the average you know, person. The other thing which is very important is that you have to learn how to work as a team. There is no single person which can accomplish you know, these things. You have to have a team which does that. Because you sit down and do all the planning, and you are always very good at doing the planning, but once you start on your journey of exploration, plans don't mean anything. It's if you have a good team with you, because you are going to have problems, you are going to have setbacks. And unless you have a first-rate team you know, going with you, which you have confidence that they will overcome you know, all of these things, uh, all the plans don't mean, don't mean anything. It's a good idea to plan, but it's really the team which goes with you. The whole team has to feel that they have a common purpose, they have a common passion, and they want to accomplish things which are impossible. And then the other thing, the, you want to have people who really question you all the time. You know, one thing, even that I'm director of the lab, I don't like people who just say, yes, whatever you say. Yes, I accept what you say. I want people to question all the time, you know, of new ideas, because nobody knows everything. You know, uh, he knows some idea, the one next to him will add to that idea, a third person will add to that idea, and by working together as a team and adding ideas to each other, that's what makes you to accomplish things which are absolutely amazing. And the last thing that we, which is very important in what we do, is to make sure that when people take a risk, they know that their leader will protect them. You know, I know many CEOs who are, they are very proud that when there is a problem, they look about whose fault it is so they can fire him or fire her. That's the worst kind of leadership. When there is a problem, the first reaction we have is, how do we solve the problem? Not who did the problem or who was the cause of it, but how do we solve that problem? And then learn from it. As you heard me saying, uh, which I was quoting Teddy Roosevelt, who was an American president in the early 1900s, he was saying, it's far better to dare mighty things, even that you might fail, than to sit down in the twilight and know neither of success, nor the, neither of victory nor defeat. Basically what he was saying is when you are pushing the limit and when you are trying new things, when you are exploring, you are going to fail every once in a while. But that's far better than to play it safe and stay home and not do anything and you will not see the joy of success that you saw here or the pain of, the, of defeat. Because from problems, from setbacks, you learn about you know, how you get better. You learn about how you can accomplish even more capable you know, things. Again, I don't know my friend here, the mountaineer, he's already my friend here. Uh, I'm sure if he didn't just wake up one day and just started walking and went to the mount, top of Mount Everest. You know, the, the, he tried, he learned, he did some certain things, there was some setbacks, he learned from them, he moved you know, a, step, a step further, and at the end he can accomplish things that many people you know, cannot accomplish. So if I have to leave you with a couple of messages you know, here, make sure you have passion that comes above everything else. Make sure you are curious. And you are always like young kids. Even when you are 80, 90 years old, be curious about the world around you. And work as a team. Because that's what allows you to accomplish. And I want to give a lot of credit for the TEDx team here. I was so impressed with seeing how they are working together. So thank you very much and have a enjoy your day.